So I stumbled upon a really weird programming language that I just have to show you. It's what's called an esoteric programming language. These are designed to test the boundaries of what even counts as a programming language. Take BrainFuck for example, it only uses 8 characters. And here is what Hello World looks like in BrainFuck. Then there is Whitespace, which only uses spaces, tabs and new lines. That's it. This is how Hello World looks in Whitespace. And of course, we have Arnold C, where every command is an Arnold Schwarzenegger code. But today we are diving into Pete. It's named after the painter Pete Mondrian, and here is the twist. Programs in Pete look like abstract art. Pete programs use a palette of 20 colors. Each color has two properties, hue and lightness except for black and white, which are special. More on those later. The palette consists of six hues, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue and magenta, and three levels of lightness, light, normal and dark. What's important isn't the actual colors themselves, but the change in hue and lightness from one color to the next. Every change corresponds to a specific command, for example, moving from light red to green involves a shift of two steps in hue and one step in lightness, which corresponds to the modulus operator. The same happens if you go from red to dark green. Both hue and lightness operate in cycles. Lightness cycles from the darkest shade back to the lightest, hue cycles back to red after magenta. So these four transitions and others involving the same shifts all represent the same modulus operator. For memory, Pete uses a stack. Every operator interacts with or modifies the stack in some way. Here are a few examples. Input number operator. Reads a number from the console and pushes it onto the top of the stack. Output number operator takes the number on top of the stack and writes it to the console. Add operator. Pops the top two elements of the stack, adds them together and pushes the result back onto the stack. Let's dive into a simple example. Creating a program that reads a number from the console and writes it back. In Pete, every program starts in the upper left corner of the image. The starting color can be any valid one, so we'll choose light red. Pete programs use a direction pointer to navigate through the code blocks. The direction pointer initially points to the right, but can change direction as the program runs. To read the number from the console, we need to select the next color carefully. The input number command requires a change of 4 steps in hue and 2 steps in lightness, so the next pixel needs to be dark blue to execute this command. After reading the number, the next step is to output it. The output number command is triggered by a change of 5 steps in hue and 1 step in lightness, therefore the next pixel should be light cyan to execute this action. Let's open my IDE, Microsoft Paint. Luckily, Paint lets me custom tweak colors. So everything's ready. It's time to draw my first speed program. Light red for the start. Dark blue to read the number. and light cyan to output it. I save, I run it, the moment of truth, it waits for input, I type in a number, boom, the number gets printed back, great success. But wait, something's off. My program doesn't stop, it just keeps running. After some serious debugging, I discovered the issue. P 
Speed programs don't automatically terminate when they reach the edge of the image. Instead, the direction pointer turns clockwise and the program continues executing. If the pointer hits another edge, it turns again. Even worse, when the program runs backward, it accidentally triggers operators like multiplication or modulo, but fortunately these operators do nothing when the stack is empty. This behavior led to the pointer looping back after reaching the left edge, resulting in an endless cycle. To fix this, I needed to delve deeper into how Pete manages program flow. Here is what I learned. A code block is any group of adjacent pixels of the same color. In this program, there are five code blocks. When the program is in the big red code block and the direction pointer points to the right, where does it continue? The answer, it moves through the farthest edge of the block in the direction pointer's current direction. Sometimes there are multiple edges at the same distance. This is where the codal chooser comes into play. It can be in one of two states, left or right, starting in the left state by default. When encountering multiple edges at the same distance, the codal chooser selects either the leftmost or rightmost edge relative to the direction pointer depending on its current state. Now that we understand how the program execution works, let's recreate the input-output program, but this time with proper termination. The first command is to take the input. When the program attempts to move into a black block or leave the image, the direction pointer stays in the same direction initially and the codal chooser changes its state. If the program execution still hits a black block or the edge of the screen, the direction pointer rotates clockwise. The program then reaches the output command. Once again, the program hits the edge of the screen. First, the codal chooser changes, followed by a change in the direction pointer. The codal chooser changes again, and then the direction pointer rotates again. At this point, there is no combination of direction pointer, direction, and codal chooser state that can escape the block. So the program terminates. So it's time to test the theory. After carefully drawing my program, I run it. And now you can see that it terminates correctly and doesn't get stuck in a loop. Now that we've learned basic input and output, let's move on to a more advanced program. This program will add multiple numbers until it reads the zero, then output the sum. I walk you through each step of the program and show you the stack so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. The program starts by reading a number from the console. This number is placed on the stack. Next, we use the duplicate operator to create a copy of the number at the top of the stack. Now we have two copies of the number. The negate operator replaces the top value of the stack with zero if it's non-zero and one if it's zero. In our case, the number is not zero, so the top value is replaced with zero. The program then uses the pointer operator, which pops the top value of the stack and rotates the direction pointer that many steps. Since we have a zero, the pointer doesn't change direction. The program reaches the add operator, which would normally take the top two values from the stack and add them together. However, since there is only one number, this operation does nothing. The program encounters a white block, which does nothing, meaning it simply moves on to the next step without performing any action. When the program reaches the edge of the image, it turns 90 degrees and loops back to the start of the program. Additionally, transitioning from a white block to a colored block also results in no operation. The program continues by reading the next number, duplicating it, negating it, and checking if the direction pointer needs to change. Now that we have two numbers on the stack, the program performs the add operation, which adds the two numbers together and put the result back on the stack. The program repeats the same process for the third input, reading, duplicating, negating, and adding the number to the existing sum on the stack.
on the fourth round, the program reads a zero. The zero signals that no more numbers will be added. The negate operator replaces the zero with a one. The pointer operator then rotates the direction pointer by one step, causing it to point downward. The next operation is the pop operator, which discards the top value of the stack. Finally, the program outputs the sum of all the numbers read before the zero. Since there is no way for the direction pointer to escape this final block, the program terminates after printing the result. Let's bring this program to life by painting it out and running it. It works perfectly, everything runs just as expected. Success! If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I see you in the next one.